we're testing the capture zone of a common spore trap air sampling device. The airflow is being adjusted to 15 liters per minute with a rotometer. This Cyclex D spore trap cassette is a slit impactor very similar to the Zephon aerosol. TEM and PCM cassettes for asbestos air samples have round inlets and operate at lower air volumes. Spore trap air samplers are commonly used because they don't need culturing before analysis. They are inexpensive compared to other analysis methods using culturing or genetic methods such as polymerase chain reaction or PCR. Lab fees can range from $25 to $50 per sample depending on the lab. Spore traps are useful for looking at rank order comparisons. This is the ranking from the most dominant to the least dominant type of mold in each sample when comparing samples. Marker organisms such as Ketomium and Stachybotrys are easily distinguishable without culturing. The biggest problem is the lumping together of the penicillium aspergillus-like group. There is a settling rate per meter for common water damage marker organisms in still or quiescent air. Aspergillus versicolor canidia or spores measuring 2.4 micrometers in aerodynamic diameter settle 1 meter in 96 minutes. Stachybotrys charturum canidia or spores measuring 4.6 micrometers in aerodynamic diameter settle 1 meter in 26 minutes. The smallest canidia or spore measured is a species of aspergillus at 1.8 micrometers. The larger the spore, the faster it settles. Look how small the capture zone is. It's no bigger than the cassette itself. The Stachybotrys charturum canidia would settle from this location in five minutes. The Aspergillus versicolor canidia would settle from this location in five minutes. The average spore trap air sample lasts five minutes. This smoke test shows the capture zone is much smaller than the 75,000 cubic centimeters normally reported by labs when converting the raw count to spores per cubic meter counts. Results given as spores per cubic meter can't be taken seriously given the variability. There may be more or less spores per cubic meter if you take enough samples in a cubic meter of airspace. One spore trap air sample can't possibly quantify that issue. The various sources warned about putting too much emphasis on a single quiescent spore trap air sample per room. A study by Larry Robertson and Bob Brandis showed wide variability for lab results from different labs analyzing the same samples. Indoor environments generally don't have morning fog or rain to lower spore counts in the air. These issues make comparisons between indoor and outdoor spore trap air sample results difficult for spore trap results. The air in indoor environments generally doesn't have much air movement except for the intermittent ventilation pathways and the occasional movement of people. A person has to walk very briskly to create one mile per hour wind. The outdoor environment has wind speeds five miles per hour or greater much of the time if you look at weather data for your area. It has been proposed by others to take semi-aggressive air samples. In a normal environment, fungal spores that settle on surfaces should match the same types of mold found in the air. This paint spray shield can be cleaned before sampling. It can create air currents from 1 to 4 miles per hour. Leaf blowers are hard to decontaminate due to internal engine parts. This helps ensure good cleaning practices with physical removal.